Good morning. I'd like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of July 25th, 2019. Our first uh, item are the hearing minutes at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on July 11th, uh, 2019. Any questions or comments on the hearing minutes? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our utility poll hearing. The first item is on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. to install one new utility pole within Brook Brookside Avenue, a public way in West Roxbury to be located on its northwesterly side at address number 113-115, generally between Green Street and Oakley Street. My name is Katie Flary, and I'm representing Eversource for this um, new pull request, and it's needed to supply service to 120 Brookside Avenue. And Katie, in this case, it is moving, it is staying within the bounds of the current uh, property owner. It's the same property owner. Uh, yes. I want the, right. And it's just moving from adjacent to one curb cut to adjacent <coughs> to another curb cut? It's, a, it's a new pole. Oh, no, I apologize. I was just adding a second pole. Katie, not related to this issue, but would appreciate if you, in cooperation with Verizon, can provide this piece of information <laughs> over the next two weeks or soon thereafter or soon before. <laughs> the number of poles that are in Boston that are owned by Eversource and the number of poles, utility poles that are owned by Verizon and whether there are joint, obviously there are joint poles, so three pieces of information. X meaning all the poles that you own exclusively, B, poles that are owned exclusively by Verizon, and last one, the number of poles that are owned jointly by you. Okay. okay. And a pole means a pole, I don't care if it's a street light pole or whether it is you have all the wires attached to that pole. Uh, is that some information which you can provide us, Katie? I can bring your message back and, and get back to and you with that. Truly, uh, because I know a I conversation. can give you the Eversource ones. Yeah. No, so I'm not sure about Verizon. It's a joint one, uh, would appreciate, since this is a joint petition, uh, Amy, if you could also convey to the team members that this is a starting point of a conversation which we need to have with you all as to how the polls are being managed. Okay. Thank you so much. Because that conversation includes the what is attached to the polls and the whole issue of double polls. Okay. It's an ongoing conversation. Thank you. And in this case, what, what is the need to have a, can you talk us why you need another pole on this to be able to get access to this property as opposed to going off of the current pole that's located? In it's to property? supply um, a service upgrade to 120 Brookside, which would be directly across the street. So it's needed um, to support the wires between the two existing poles that are already there. Any other questions or comments on this? Amy or Todd? Good. Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve, install one new utility pole within Brookside Avenue as record, as read into the record by the chair. All, right. All in favor? Aye. All right, so moved. Thank you. Our next item is on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. to install one new utility pole within Curlew Street, a public way in West Roxbury, to be located on its southeasterly side and southwest of Maplewood Street. So this pole is needed um, to support wires that feed Curlew Street um, from off of Maplewood Street. A new sidewalk was installed there. So um, to support the wires, this new pole needs to go in. We're requesting it to. More question of sequencing than about this. Obviously, we just rebuilt this street. Yes, this was a subject of a betterment. Um, yep. It is now a public, public way. Yes. Is, is there a reason this, as we were reconstructing the street, that this wasn't picked up? Like, what is our process for having, uh, for connecting with utility companies? This may be a question for, uh, for us as well. So, Chief, unfortunately, uh, when we rebuild a street, when we turn a private street to a public street, we do not reach out to the telecommunication company. That may be a short sight on our part. Uh, 
I think we do with the full owners because we've had a separate one that Bob was working out where he was building a street and we needed to pull relocated and it was a problem. But that, I, I think that we do at least go for the anything that needs to be relocated. Because if this is action required, the sidewalk to be. So we can figure out in the future how to make sure that we're not breaking into a newly built sidewalk for a new pole. But you will obviously exercise as much care and caution as possible in installing the new pole so that there is not an excessive cut made. Yes. Thank you. Right, other questions or comments on this one? Amy or Todd? Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve install one new utility pole within Curlew Street as read into the record by the chair. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to the public hearing portion. Our first item is on a petition by MCAF Winthrop LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of a temporary earth support system within the following public ways in Boston proper. The locations are Federal Street on its Wesley side at address number 115, generally north of Federal Court, Matthew Street, and Devonshire Street on its easterly side at address number 240, generally at Winthrop Square and Otis Street. This was new business on July 11th, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Temporary Tower Crane Foundation, Winthrop Square Tower, Boston, two sheets, dated July 2019. Good morning. Good morning, members of the commission. My name is Kathleen McNeil. I represent MCAF Winthrop LLC, the petitioner. We're here today to request permission to install a crane pad, which will serve as a foundation for our building crane, along with piles to support that crane. In addition, we're requesting um, installation of a secant wall along Devonshire Street. Uh, this is to support the Winthrop Center project, which is located in downtown Boston. A photograph of the project is here for anyone who's not familiar with it. Uh, the project is expected to take another three years to construct. I'll turn it over to Madeline DeClerc from Niche Engineering so that she can review the plans that you have in front of you. Uh, we have a proposed tower crane pad on Devonshire Street. Um, its location is in an already controlled construction site, if you're familiar with the site out there. Um, the piles driven for the foundation um, will require some excavation to uncover the utilities that are there, and then we'll carefully drive piles um, to avoid any utility conflicts. There'll be um, there have been pre-construction videos of the Boston Water and Sewer um, Combined Sewer Line through this area. Um, we'll be continuing vibration monitoring and have a post-construction video of those lines as well. The um, secant walls, um, we do have one proposed along Devonshire under the sidewalk and Federal Street as well under the sidewalk. Um, these are temporary um, foundation needs, so they'll be cut per um, the city standard, six feet under a, si a sidewalk and 10 feet below any vehicular roadway after, after their use. Are there any questions? I have a question to see, um, referring to the expertise of the sewer commission, you are going to cut, once you're done with the pad, you're going to cut it at six feet. Ten in the road, six in the sidewalk. Correct. What's the lowest utility? Where's the lowest utility? Okay. Will you cut it below the lowest utility? Because if the, lo if the utilities need to be adjusted on a horizontal plane, we are going to be infringing on your micropiles. Yeah, I don't think we have any below the Lowest utility is, is roughly 12 feet down. Oh. Okay, <clears throat> so that would be both. So that would be we, we will. You need to cut it below the lowest utility. Right. So if okay. we okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Got because that. Because your pads don't properly reflect that. Got that. Or your comments. So make sure that you cut it. So this way, if any of the utilities need to be adjusted on a horizontal plane, that it is not going to impact your 
Understood. Yep, got, it. got it. I would like to make one clarification for the record. Um, Madeline mentioned driving the piles. Just to be clear, we will be drilling the piles. Has the video already been shared with Water and Sewer? Uh, oh, yeah, we looked at that. Perfect. Yeah, and um, we also commented that we would be getting, we would be receiving uh, post-construction post -construction. videos, so. Right. Other questions or comments? Amy or Todd? We're good. Members of the public? All right, I'll entertain a motion on the second. Uh, make a motion to approve the granting of an earth retention license for Federal Street, Devonshire Street, as read into the record by the chair. Second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. So move. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by Jackson Square Partners LLC, 25 Amory Apartments LLC, uh, 250 Center Street Housing LLC, 41 Amory LLC, and the Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority to the approval of the line and grade of a new public way in, in Roxbury known as Brewery Lane from Amory Street. Uh, slash Amory Street connector to a point generally 290 feet northwesterly at the proposed Alliance Way. This was new business on July 11th, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Line and Grade Plan, Brewery Lane, Jackson Square, Public Way, Jamaica Plan, two sheets dated October 2018. Good morning. Oh, good morning. My name is John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, uh, and I'm here with uh, JPNDC, the community builders, um, and this is the, the summation of years of uh, a long design process um, started back in 2007, um, and I'd like my, uh, my, my associates here to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Juan Torres. I work with the Community Builders. I'm here representing uh, 250 Center Street. And T. Salsa, Senior Project Manager with Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corporation for 25 Amory Street. So we'll be... Excuse me, Jamie, who do we have from DOT, DOT? Sorry, but <laughs> boy, do I feel stupid. <laughs> Good to see you, Mr. Boyd. Uh, so a as I indicated, this is part of a, um, one piece of a larger project that combines um, several parcels within the Jackson Square area, as the overview plan indicates. Um, over the last 10 years, we've been working with JP, JPNDC um, with the build out of Site 3, Jackson Square. And then later on the agenda, we'll have uh, petitioners from Community Builders and Urban Edge and the Boston Housing Authority for improvements within this parcel here. These two parcels have been working, unfortunately, again, I've been the engineer in Boston, been able to coordinate our work. But we, at the end of the day, we hope to have approval for Brewery Lane, which will be a public way that runs from here, from here to here, Alliance Way that runs from here to Montague Street, and Holster Street, which is a private way from Amory Ave. Way and sorry, Amory Street, and then we have Holloway Street from Amory Street to Alliance Way. The, pitch, the petition that's before you presently is for Brewery Lane, which is a public proposed as a public way. Um, it's we provide a 58 foot right of way. Street to Alliance Way, which, is, which will be a private way. Um, we have 10 foot concrete sidewalks on both sides with tree pits and public street lighting. It's approximately 290 feet long from Amory Street to its termination. Um, we also provide curb cuts for the build out of our site, which includes 25 Amory Street, 250 Center Street, and curb cuts for an abutter who hopes to develop that parcel in the coming, land, in the coming years. Um, we have a 38-foot travel lane, which consists of two 7-foot parking lanes and 24 feet of travel lanes for two-way traffic. What is the right of way with? Right away with is 58 feet. 58? Yeah. Does this align with Amory Street that comes and there's a dog leg over there? It is. It, 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 it does not, but it, it's getting incrementally better. It's too skewed to... Because it's a public street, open to public. Yeah, there's, so, a little, there's a little bit of a great change out there that I think it precludes, like... So your staff is fine with this offset of a public street? That Amory Street comes, then it, Amory Street makes a left, but if you are going on Amory Street straight, it is no longer called Amory Street, it is Brewery Lane. It's really going to be good for... Well, you otherwise you're at an intersection of Amory and Amory. 
John, who, who owns parcel 2A? Uh, sorry, other side, the... Uh, oh, yeah, I think we had that plan. I know we discussed this a little bit of new business, but if there is a future chance to align, to make that intersection more... Uh, oh, parcel 2A here? Oh, sorry, no, the one to the right, which I think is the limit, turn from on the reason we can't be squared is that you have an existing building. So are you speaking to which parcel? Here? Oh, maybe it's not too bad. It, it is getting better because we're bumping it out. So like, if the roads don't align, but the crosswalks will be pretty straight. So this, this parcel here is owned by, uh, according to the record, Joseph Capadonna, and now we're formally. Um, and he has been, this, this abutter has been um, a partner in this development. And we've had numerous years of conversation with the BPDA and various city agencies to come out with this geometry. And the owner on the other side of the room, then? Here? Yep. This That's is, uh, this is, this will be the development parcel for JP and DC and the community builders. That's the current, that's the exist. And is there a, a reason or uh, why we would not look to, when that, when that happens, to sort of square brewery land more with the actual, with where Amory comes in? This building that kind of comes right in right. Yeah. So we have a building that comes up to here. And part of the development, part of the future plans is not to tear down that building? It doesn't exist yeah, yet. Yeah, it's a new construction. So we have a new building that, Actually, yes. Yes. Uh, let's get, make sure that the record reflects correctly that it is not an existing building. It's a new proposed building that I'm going to assume doesn't have site plan approval. It has water and sewer site plan approval and BBDA yeah. approval. Um, and we have one that's... So the, the, where the building is situated is kind of a lot based on the grading. Like it's, you know, like you come in at one level and you exit at a different level. Grade change from here to here. So it's that all that can be done this, to this manage is it. as close Let's as we there. can get this to line, okay. for sure. Nice. Yeah. And uh, I know we talked about this in new business, but the at the intersection of uh, Alliance and Brewery, that crossing is going to go to a path which comes out on Center Street. Correct. There's a, a walkway that runs from here up through Center Street. And in the future, the, on the MBTA parcel that will be constructed as a greenway to yep. allow pedestrian access from Center Street through uh, the perceived desire line to right, that absolutely. particular. Maybe the logic for keeping Brewery Lane over to public. It's a public. Uh, public street uh, east. It's a, a very long story. Yes. Never mind. Um, but okay, it, no. yeah, okay. it's definitely a public street. Do you anything else you want to cover on this item? So that's generally that's it for the public. The line grade. Yeah. Right. Other questions or comments on the line grade? Street lighting, maybe. What's that? Street lighting, yeah. that's it. This one. Yes. The lights are consistent with the rest of the private street ones. Yes. Any Todd, any questions? No. Members of the public? Right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve line and grade of Brewery Lane as read into the record by the chair. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by Jackson Square Partners LLC, 250 Center Street Housing LLC, 75 Amory Apartments LLC, 41 Amory LLC, Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority for the layout approval of a new private way open to public travel in Roxbury known as Alliance Way from the terminus of Amory Avenue to the terminus of the proposed Brewery Lane. This was new business on July 11th and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Layout approval plan, Alliance Way, private way, open to public travel, Jackson Square, Jamaica Plain, two sheets dated October 2018. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, and with me is? Uh, and T.A. Salza with JPNDC. And Juan Torres with uh, TCB. So this, this section of Alliance Way, Alliance Way, when we're said and done, is going to be a private way that runs from the intersection of Brewery Lane to Atherton Street. The portion that we're looking at right now runs from Brewery Lane to Amory Avenue. It's a, a private way with perpendicular parking. It's a 45 foot wide private, 40 foot wide private way. It's approximately 350 feet from in, uh, in length. Uh, we provide eight foot parking lane on the southerly side, and then we have a 22 foot travel lane for two way traffic, and then we have an eight foot, um, and then we have 18 foot depth perpendicular parking through here. And as you mentioned before, you can see the pedestrian path of travel from here to Jackson. What does it be do to ensure that this street never gets petitioned to become a public? Uh, we'll put that right in the order. Don't worry about it. The developer knows that? Yes. 
Yeah, I think that that's their proposed design. Yeah. And related to that, we we often get petitions for streets that were built as private ways to become public ways at some point in time because future residents may not be aware of their obligations just to make clear to folks that uh, their obligations for maintaining the street over time is, uh, it will be important to be clear with tenants. Uh, Are these rental properties or dealer uh, for sale properties? I was about to say, they're rental properties and JPNDC we'll holds them long term, so we properties. will continue to be the owners. So, right. Likewise Great. for 250 Center Street. Perfect. Other questions on this component of Alliance Way? Name your Todd. Members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve layout approval of Alliance Way as read into the record by the chair. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item is on a joint petition by Amory Street Partners LLC, the Boston Housing Authority. Amory Terrace Limited Partnership and the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority for the layout approval of a new private way open to public travel in Roxbury known as Alliance Way. Uh, from the terminus of Amory Avenue to Ather Atherton Street, this was new business on July 11th, 2019, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Layout Approval, Alliance Way, Private Way, Open to Public Travel, 125 Amory Street, Jamaica Plain, six sheets dated August 2018. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, and I'll let the petitioners introduce themselves. Dean Papadimitri representing the Boston Housing Authority. Juan Torres representing the Community Builders. Sharon Small representing Urban Edge. So this section of Alliance Way will start at the uh, intersection of uh, Amory Ave, which is the public way, and, and excuse me, intersection of Amory Ave and Alliance Way, and then run from here to Atherton Street. Uh, it's approximately 810 feet long. Um, it has a variable width between 38 and 40 feet. We're providing uh, a nine-foot sidewalk on the uh, southerly side. Within that will be a five-foot concrete sidewalk and four feet of pavers. Uh, we, we have 35 feet of pavement. I'm sorry. Um, we have seven-foot parallel parking lanes through here, and then we have a 22-foot travel lane for two-way two traffic. And then off of that, we have 18-foot uh, parking spaces for per perpendicular parking. There will be street trees and street lights. We also provide with components tabletops for pedestrian safety at this intersection here of Halloway Street and Alliance Way, and a tabletop at Holter Street and Alliance Way. Um, and just in regards to uh, structability, Building C, this building here, is tentative to start construction on late winter, or, I'm sorry, late winter. Late, late 2020, early 2021, uh, at which point we will build Pulsar Street here and then Atherton Street out here to provide aerial traffic. And then the future phases will come on in coming years as funding becomes available. Street lighting again, maybe yep. make it by them or us? Uh, us. So they install and then they're part of the city's lighting system. So the lighting system. system? We own lights on private ways, or we're responsible for lighting private ways. Yes, the street lighting. John Street Lighting has checked on this yes, and approved these things, including the location of the handholds and their ability to service them. Yes, they reviewed the plans. Other questions or comments on this? I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve the layout approval of Alliance Way as read into the record by the chair. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by Amory Street Partners LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the layout approval of a new private way open to public travel in Roxbury known as Holzer Street from the proposed Alliance Way to Amory Street, located approximately across uh, from West Walnut Park. This was new business on July 11, 2019. This has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Layout Approval, Holzer Street, Private Way, Open Public Travel, 125 Amory Street, Jamaica Plain, Five Sheets State, August 2018. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering, and petitioners are? Dean Papadimitri, representing the Boston Housing Authority. Juan Torres, representing the Community Builders. Sharon Small, Urban Edge. 
So Halsey Street is a private way that runs from Amory Street to Alliance Way. It's got a 53-foot right-of-way. It's approximately 320 feet in length. We provide nine-foot sidewalks on both sides, five feet concrete, and then four feet of pavers. We have a pavement width of 34 feet uh, that allows one-way traffic for a 20-foot travel lane and two seven-foot parking lanes. The intersections are widened to be 22 feet wide. We also have a tabletop, as we discussed earlier, at Alliance Way, and then we have a tabletop rooftop here um, to encourage pedestrian travel through the park lane. Okay, for the those tabletops are on private ways to private ways, right? Correct. All the tabletops are within private ways. Okay. And it's been reviewed and, and, uh, and blessed by the city, various city agencies. Fire department obviously has a BDD through fire. Yeah, um, the, we had to pretty specifically tackle fire for the uh, brewery lane, so I think they've seen and some of the earlier conversation about Alliance Way, the property owners of Jason Holzer know that this is a private way that has to be maintained right yeah, over time. Yeah, street signage will say private way. Okay. Other questions or comments? Name your time. Okay. Members of the public? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. Make a motion to approve the uh, layout approval of Holzer Street as read into the record by the chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. We're going to our next item on a joint petition by Amory Street Partners LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the layout approval of a new private way open to public travel in Roxbury known as Holloway Street from the proposed Alliance Way to Amory Street located between Bragdon Street and Dimmick Street. This was new business on July 11, 2019. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Layout Approval Holloway Street Private Way Open to Public Travel 125 Amory Street, Jamaica Plain, 5 Sheets State, August 2018. Oh, good morning, John Schmidt with Leach Engineering, and the petitioners are? Dean Papadimitri, representing the Boston Housing Authority. Juan Torres, representing the Community Builders. Sharon Small, representing Urban Edge. So Holloway Street is a private way from Hammering Street to Alliance Way, with similar uh, design characteristics of the other private ways. It's a 54 foot right of way, with two nine foot, si nine foot sidewalks on each side, five feet of concrete, and four feet of pavers. Um, this will allow two-way traffic. We have uh, 21 feet of travel lane and two seven-foot parking lanes. We also propose a tabletop here, as we had here, to allow a nice, safe pedestrian uh, access through the site. Stop signs, all of those will be. Yeah, the signage will by The developer will put in the signage and it will indicate that they're private ways. Street lighting is also reviewed and approved. Other questions or comments? Okay. Members of public. Well, do you have a motion on this item? I'll make a motion to approve the layout approval of Halloway Street as read into the record by the chair. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item uh, is on a joint petition by Amory Street Partners LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the acceptance of two pedestrian easements adjacent to Amory Street and Public Way in Roxbury. Located on its northwesterly side at address number 125, generally between Atherton Street and Dimmick Street. This was new business on July 11th, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, 125 Amory Street, Roxbury, Two Sheets Aid, January 10th, 2019. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. Dean Papadimitri representing the Boston Housing Authority. Juan Torres with the Community Builders. So this is a small section of Amory Street uh, that runs along the side of the frontage. Uh, you may recall we were here last fall where we received the specific repairs and a deputy for the section in front of 125 Amory. Uh, this road, this building is now currently going through some uh, re rehabilitation. The site work hasn't started yet, but it will be 
happening uh, in the near future. Um, so, so we're continuing that five foot pedestrian easement from uh, the intersection of Ulster Street to the property's edge and then the intersection of Holloway Street to the property's edge. And this will allow a compliant side, accessible sidewalk for the public. Sorry, I don't see this in the specific repair plan, and, but what is the resulting width of the sidewalk? The sidewalk, actually the overall sidewalk will be 14 feet wide, and we have eight feet of concrete and six feet of pervious papers. With new street lighting as well. Questions or comments on the pedestrian easement? No. Mayor Todd? Yes. Members of the public? I'll entertain a motion on this item. To approve pedestrian easements on Amory Street as read into the record by the chair. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Uh, moving on to our uh, next item and our final item of this set. Uh, on a joint petition by Amory Street Partners LLC and the Boston Housing Authority for the making of specific repairs within Amory Street, Roxbury, located on its northwestly side at address number 125, generally between Atherton Street and Dimmick Street consisting of curb, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavements, uh, street trees, bike racks, bollards, street lighting infrastructure, irrigation infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, and curb cuts. This was new business on July 11, 2019. This is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, 125 Amory Street, Public Way, Jamaica Plain, Four Sheets, State August 2018. Good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. Dean Papadimitri for the Boston Housing Authority. Juan Torres, the community builders. Sharon Small, Urban Edge. So these specific repairs reflect what was approved last year in front of 125 Amory Street. We have an eight foot wide concrete sidewalk, six feet of pervious pavers, street trees and street lights um, between the just recently approved private way to the project limits. John, I have a question related to the overall project, mm -hmm. your very first key map which you had, yes. can you be ever so kind to put sure. that in now? Dean, this question is, I think, for you ask and The segment of Amory Street, okay, so it comes from Tremont, makes a dog leg. Yeah. Right, so the remaining part of yeah. that, what in your, what is the current thinking as to what happens to that piece of roadway? Who does what when? I just want to make sure that when you all are finished. It's in your budget. Uh, as a pass through or action? No, no, we're never breaking through to Center Street. Um, but it's in your budget to reconstruct the sidewalk along this out to Center Street. That and essentially, see. it's going to be in function like a plaza at the end there. Uh, these guys hope to even have a cafe that kind of is situated out there. But it'll it'll end almost like a, a it'll be a pedestrian plaza. And We're not breaking into Center Street. Right. And to add to that, I think the the work related to that would be associated with the previous approvals. With um, it was associated with 25 Amory and 250 Center Street. So, so we'll, yeah, we'll be reaching out to Public Works in the near future before we get to these So to so that I can have allocate appropriate resources. When should that be done to align with both so, the projects needs to right. come together? So the 20, this section, 25 Amory Street, will be breaking ground this fall. It's probably a 24 month construction cycle. And with that, we will be building Alliance Way and Brewery, Brewery Lane. Uh, we have designed this for the, to meet both the future and the existing condition. So we will be reaching out to Public Works in the near future to, to advance the design and permitting. And Who's going to do the design? Mitch Engineering will do that design. At your, that's who's on your behalf. So like on we, my you're, we, we have your it's in your budget for both design and construction. Yeah. So and I really um, appreciate it. it's you who's, yeah. who's going to do it. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I just <laughs> 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 huh. I would like to add that the Boston Housing Authority is uh, a proponent of the one twenty five Amory site. We're, we don't own the land that goes all the way to Center Street, but we are obviously supportive of the overall project. There's a parcel we own, there's a parcel the MBTA owns, and it's all going to get essentially reconfigured um, and hopefully... So manage expectations roughly when should the street, that little bit of roadway, be done by? Because I can't have two contractors falling over each other while you have your building contractor and roadway contractor, so can you shed some 
can someone shed some light? So we, we, we've designed this uh, to be independent of the Amity Street reconstruction. Mm -hmm. um, and we understand your concern. But because it is we also, we're also hesitant to approach the city until we demonstrated we had a real project because it's been on the books for so long. But now that we know we're real and we have the construction contract they start here as well as over here, or they, they meet with you in the next few weeks to so plan to schedule. So folks, give me at least 18 months, one eight, 18 months okay. for us to get it designed, advertised, and finish construction. Okay. okay. So we're looking at spring of 20. Okay. Understood. Is there any soil contamination issues going on that's a bit of that's the part because yeah, no, I think that that's if you uh, the opposite side of the street because um, that's where the uh, gas station. The works. situation needs to be managed. I know how this money, this conversation went. So I just want to manage the conversations through this public hearing process, where the city has allocated some resources, but it is not a open checkbook. And we, we will do uh, anything, everything in our power to coordinate with you and, you know, coordinate it with the project and the construction and the timelines. And um, we're looking forward to meeting with you um, after uh, the start of this uh, project. Thank you. Any other desire line that we're creating, which is great, and it's probably more for Mark, uh, that will then come out onto the, the bridge that I believe is owned by the MBTA or by MassDOT uh, on Center Street. It will create Probably a pretty significant flow, both pedestrians and cyclists who are going to be coming out there. I think we, just, we want to work with you as you do any repair work on that on the Center Street Bridge to make sure we're guiding people to the Southwest Corridor correctly. Uh, I know it, it ends at a crosswalk, but that crosswalk goes into the Jackson uh, Square T-stop rather than directly to the Southwest Corridor. Just figure out the right way to create exactly how to create that alignment back up to the Southwest Corridor. Other questions or comments on the specific repairs? Amy or Todd? Good. All right, members of the public. All right, I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve specific repairs within Amory Street as read into the record by the chair. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by Crown Castle Fiber for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants uh, to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within Tremont Street in Boston proper. Generally, the address number 719 between West Concord Street, Concord Square, and Rutland Street, Rutland Square. This was new business on July 11, 2019. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan 719 Tremont Street, Boston, Mass. One sheet dated June 27, 2019. Good morning. morning, Commission members. I'm Shelley Cullen, representing Crown Castle. And when we spoke before, I told you this was a lead company request. There are no participants. Um, it's about 300 feet. And um, we have already been through the Landmark Commission. Um, and they, you know, they approved it. And when I was last here, you asked that I speak with Charlotte Fleetwood. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yep. Yep. And Stephanie, yeah. Is she here? Yes. Oh, yes. Stephanie. Yes. Sorry, so would you check up on me? Excellent. Well, I have, I have my proof right here, too. Um, I did speak with Daniel Marrow, and, um, and there is a new curb line going in, but it won't interfere. Okay. Um, so basically, it is from the fire station going this way, yep. about 30 feet, where uh, that will, it may end up above our trench. Okay. But um, not where the handhold is proposed. Handle Great. And so no one has any concerns. Good. Thank you very much. Ms. Collins, can I ask you a big favor? Sure. For future projects of this nature, and this is something which we are going to be asking all such petitioners, OK? Uh, we truly appreciate if you can have such plans, even plans of this nature, be reviewed by our street lighting division within the Public Works Department. Uh, they they have oh, all been. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, that's the very first thing I do, actually. Even sometimes before it gets through water and sewer, Ms. I've gotten responses. I know you do excellent stuff, but I have to make it as a public record that it is okay. just not something we are asking others. We are asking you and all parties to have. It is just not, even if you're just, it makes common sense when you're just doing a light pole change out. You all mm -hmm. reach out to the street like folks. 
but for any digs awesome that are associated with this type of work, we would like you to consult with our street lighting folks. Absolutely. Okay. We've been receiving approvals for the node location okay. as our street lighting approval, and what we need is for them to specifically approve the dig and not just yes. the, the full swap. Yes, okay. okay. Absolutely. The infrastructure because we want to invest in our ability to manage the street lighting divisions, they are under down pipes as yes. much as with developments, water and sewer things. So these are important things for us. Okay, great. Other questions or comments on this item? Name your top members of the public. On the side. Make a motion to approve grants of location within Tremont Street as read into the record by the chair. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Excellent, thank you. Moving on to new business, our first item is Arlington Street, Commonwealth Avenue, Roxbury Street, West 4th Street, Boston Proper, Brighton, Roxbury, South Boston. Grant of location on a set of petitions by the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Dino DeFrangio, uh, representing the MBTA, Rob Crafty, MBTA project manager, and Matt Mullaly from AECOM. Just let you guys know, uh, everybody know in advance, we have received uh, approvals from all city of Boston departments. We have a tentative with BWSC, and Denise and I have been coordinating, and we've run everything through Amy and Todd uh, in the PIC office. So I'll pass it over to Rob Crafty, MBTA project manager. Hello, everyone. So what we have here are um, five locations where we'll be in the city street replacing the MBTA's duck banks, which are in a state of disrepair. And um, it's risen to the level of a very urgent situation. So we're going to take care of it. And um, our schedule is to have it substantially complete by the end of this year. So. Um, that's the essence of the project. Before we get into these four specific actions, Rob, is this part of, sort of a, an overall investment in duck bank infrastructure by the T? Yes. Can you sort of walk us through what we should be expecting as the PIC over the next however long as, this, uh, as you do this work? Right. So um, these were uh, relegated as the highest priority. So with the um, MBTA Power Department is reviewing that now. So what, what will follow on for the next set of priority? I don't know what that is yet. Scale, how, how many how many of these do you expect to do? How many do you expect to bring before the PIC over the next uh, year or years? I, I, Chief, I, this is this is system wide duck yeah. bank improvements phase one, right? Mm -hmm. um, I can get all that information for you and I'll get it back to you. Yeah, just, like, is it 10 or 100? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, no, I, I, I understand, <laughs> I understand the question and I'll get it back to you right. so you know what, what you're looking at in the upcoming year. Perfect. I'll get that information to you. Yeah. So in addition to what the Chief said, and I'm just going to randomly pick one for the gentleman from AECOM. Yes. So mm -hmm. the plans which you have submitted for Arlington and Com App yes. is just that. I have, um, and I apologize for me not being able to pick up all the details, but I don't have an understanding as to the size of the duck banks, the location of the duck banks. So you need to share some information with us. As much as we want to be supportive of your projects, Mm -hmm. When you're chopping up the intersection of Arlington and Com Am, there's a little bit of a concern over there. So help us to okay. understand what is it that we want, what is being asked of us. Okay, so the information that has been supplied is feels inadequate. Right. So this, yes, sir. this is an abbreviated version of a 60 page set that's gone out to uh, for bid. Um, so, so the first set is West 4th Street over the red line tracks in Amtrak. And near the uh, Cabot. Cabot Yard. Yards. Sorry. So it, it goes over to Cabot Yard. This is a nine duck bank, three over three configuration, concrete and case, uh, with five inch conduits. So West 4th Street is. So about the envelope feet. total area which you have to <laughs> occupy. Uh, it's about three feet. Maybe do they know the sort of information which we need, which is a cross yeah. section of where the utilities are, proximity to the gas lines? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. They know this stuff. They yeah. So I think that we'll probably take your larger subset and pick different pieces of it to be included in this one. But Actually, we'll a cross section of your document. Do you have the last sheet? 
is yes. uh, the cross section of the dot banks. The different configurations we have. Yeah. So in addition to that, I'm sure the water and sewer commission must may want to know the location and the proximity of your duct banks because lately, as in other projects, we appreciate your duct banks being there, but sometimes when we try to do roadway reconstruction work, we need to work with you to adjust them or manage that situation. So do help us to understand where you are asking for a grant of location because that's what we normally do with others. And okay. Tyler, we, we work with Phil Rock uh, on numerous meetings uh, and, and Denise also, or just on that information. Okay. Yeah, water sewer is dealing with a much larger plan set than you have in front of you. Yeah. Okay. So just if you can just zoom into Arlington and comment because I'm somewhat familiar with that project with all the other uh, station improvements which you did over there. Yep. Seem right. Yes, Arlington Street. Does the temporary one get removed when you're done? Temporary one will be abandoned in place. No, see, see, that, that's. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to talk because then when we have to do our assets, we have to deal with your leftover stuff. You want and that removed? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not that smart to give instantaneous justice because I need to consult with yeah. the good people from the BTA yeah. to understand the fiscal implications while you are trying to do so much. Right. Okay? So right. it's a conversation, but yeah. you can't give instantaneous judgment as being asked of me to say that yes, it is going to stay or it is going to be removed. Let me, let me rephrase it. Would it be a better situation if it was removed? Yes. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Well, we'll, we'll I'll, take, I'll take care of it. Okay. Yep, yeah. all set. Yep. So that is the proposal for And at what date are you? So they need to understand that your your five 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 whatever the rationality yeah, and all of that. Yeah, we really want them at the, the depth that bar to go. Exactly. Yeah. So that yeah. Dennis is not going to be messed up later. Okay. Sorry, uh, No, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's the uh, focus for Alton Street. Was there any other sites or anything else? No, the Denny Square one is actually, I think, one that we need to make sure that we are coordinating on because that has some implications with our Dudley Phase 1 and Dudley Phase 2 projects. Yep. I assume if you yeah. had... I'm meeting with uh, some of the key staff members Perfect. to manage that situation. Okay. Uh, recognizing that MBTA was part of the city and we allow you all, because we were all one entity 100 years ago, so all of this stuff got done. But now we just need to make sure that the allocation of these new resources are structured so that we know where each person is. And I discussed the Dudley uh, location, John yeah. Mazzella, or Joe Mazzella, John. Yeah. in our department, yeah. so we're coordinating also. Right. Yes. So that make perfect. As long as that is... Uh, Phase one has been uh, avoided with our work. Great. Yeah. And this would, I think, have a phase two implication? I think we'll have, with one man, all on Warren Street. On Warren Street. Yeah. Do you know, because I'm meeting with Joe Pavo and others from the yeah. BTA, so just let support Mr. Pavo appropriately with this information so when we are meeting it is a complete conversation, I'm, not just that this phase one. I'm, I'm discussing also with Joe and, and his boss Eric Stutoff. They're in the loop on this also and I'll, and I'll awesome. continue I'll continue awesome. that coordination. Thank you. Uh, we talked Dudley, we talked Arlington. Uh, can you walk us through quickly and you mentioned West Fork. Uh, the combat one is uh, the one right uh, ComAv, we have uh, two sites on ComAv, uh, one at Washington Street and one at Lake Street. Um, the first is at the very end at Lake Street where there is a terminal to the uh, E-Line. Uh, there's a, a section of duct bank that is uh, broken, it's right next to the tracks. We propose to put the new duct bank uh, next to it in the uh, sidewalk, the um, paved Sorry, it's not a sidewalk. It's a paved area next to the roadway. Uh, there's no pedestrian access here. And then into the left turn lane and avoid the uh, drainage at the intersection. So that is Lake Street. And then we have Comet and Washington Street. 
Washington, there was some track work done earlier this year, and we have a temporary duct bank uh, crossings so that we do not have to disturb the, the uh, track work. And we will be continuing with the duct bank and mantles uh, up the ballast stone area next to the tracks, and then cutting over cables as part of this project. So the reason I'm making some of these statements is to follow a sort of a governing principle or understanding within the Public Improvement Commission. When the PIC Commission gives a grant of location to any person, it is implied that when the city needs that stuff to be moved, it is to be moved to our timeline at that entity's expense. Now the MBTA is sort of a quasi partner with the city, so we want to be extra cautious where when you put some stuff, it doesn't preclude from the city in doing its current or future operations. So we really hate to come to you in the future and say, please move your stuff because your assets contribute to the transportation network of this city. Right. Okay, yep. so yep. There's, there's some a little bit more cursory review that needs to be done to ensure that your location doesn't impede the city's greater transportation plans. Thank you. Also have from BDD also reviewed them. Katie, I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Sorry, everybody does. I wanted to just reiterate, uh, Dino, I know we, we spoke earlier uh, today, too, but I would expect uh, our review will probably be completed within the next day or two. I don't see that being an issue if this was going to move to a public airing, so okay, I just wanted to you. let you know. Yeah. Thanks for your help, Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Members of the public? All right. If you can have some of those uh, BTV Public Works conversations about the specifics of the location, pull some some of the additional drawings for uh, the next PIC and then just come up with this, between you and Rob, the orders of magnitude of what we're yep. looking at. Absolutely. Okay. Over whatever time period, it'd be great. Yep, absolutely. Can all that be pulled together by August 8th? Absolutely. All right, see you guys on August 8th. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item of new business is 24 Orleans Street in East Boston, the Sidewalk Cafe, on a joint petition by Uvivo LLC, doing business as Canard Tavern and Pratt LLC. us through the, the resulting space of the sidewalk after you sort of after the sidewalk cafe is installed. So you're still going to have a 36 um, inch accessible route for all pedestrians walking through. We plan on sectioning it off right now. We're showing um, some chain link and some balusters to section off the um, so five, basically five feet from the sidewalk, 36 yeah. feet for the, 36 inches yeah, the 36 for the, inches is within the, within cafe. the cafe. The cafe is pretty much on private property. It's just the server circulation that's in the public way. Yep. So, hello. Absolutely thrilled that you are doing this. Thank you. Okay, because with all the projects that is coming up within our waterfront area, mm -hmm. this is really, really nice. Thank you. If I was living in the area, I'll come and see you. But my question is, how many other establishments are there within maybe five block, three blocks area before you get to Maverick, Maverick Square that are similar to your place of business? 
within five blocks? I'd... You know, within the neighborhood, because I just want to understand what is the what is the ripple effect of us doing this. This is really, really nice. So we're hoping that more cafes in East Boston will we'll be more it. cafes in East Boston. This is only our second. Um, okay, because this is waterfront but, area, you know, yeah, finally. There are a lot of restaurants in, in East Boston that have outdoor seating. No, 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 within the same street, within your, oh, your within street. the same street? Um, probably, we're the only restaurant currently in operation in, operation. in that area. Um, it's a little bit interesting. This is sort of towards the end of Maverick, going back towards the waterfront. It's exactly, I mean, that's my point. It is closer to the water, not the tea station. Correct. This is what I call the... There's not a ton of restaurants out here, but we, we well, Todd and I have been to East Boston to mm -hmm. discuss with their... Um, Main Street coordinator, okay. and we've hit kind of the, uh, you know, hey, let's castle this. wide net. We were trying to okay. get a bunch of them to come together, okay. buy furniture together, and do that for Maverick Square. Um, so we're, we're doing it, but these guys are... Thank you. Front. Thank you for what you are doing. We just are very excited and supportive. Just want to see what's, what else can happen. Sure. So that way we are setting the thresholds, Amy because it is nice that they are taking much of the responsibility on their private property so that the sidewalk is still left for functionality and you can have a cafe. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So we're hoping that something can trigger something. Okay. okay. We'll get more. Nice. Thank you. Uh, this may be specific just to the rendering and, but, and not to the design itself, but presumably any of the four seat tables, particularly sort of the, the two that are on the edge, could also be used by a person who's using a wheelchair. And, right. right. Okay. That's why I make sure that and it'll be good for you to actually note that in our yeah. plans. Just that we're not, as shown, it makes it look as though if you're, if you're using a wheelchair, you can only be with one other person. Okay. Yeah, the whole, I mean, they're all uh, tables that are accessible, so. Other questions or comments? Any other top? Okay. Members of the public? Right. We appreciate what you guys are doing. See you guys on August 8th. Thanks, uh, Our next item of new business is White Street, Utah Street, Trend Street, East Boston, a granted location on a petition by two pieces of something. Chris Murray with the GMRE Group, representing TC Systems. Uh, looking at grand location on Trenton Street, White Street, and Utah Street. Uh, total distance of the installation is approximately 700 feet, um, mostly on White Street. Uh, the method of construction will be micro trenching uh, for fiber optic installation. Uh, we sought out participants as normal, um, there were none. Uh, we looked for a city shadow. There's none available in that area. And there were no uh, Verizon conduits in that area as they mostly have aerial plant. Looks like all the handles are in the sidewalk out of uh, the This, that, this right? first one here on uh, White Street, on the, uh, we originally had on the sidewalk, and we were told that it may want to be moved to the outside of the uh, park, which would be an easy change. That's the Please, again, appreciate all the work which you all are doing, like the fact that you are doing the micro-trenching. Not sure if you were here earlier, uh, but what we are asking is all telecommunication companies to have these plans reviewed by our street lighting division within Public Works to ensure that it is consistent with some of the city's objectives in managing the street light infrastructure. So it is just one incremental step which you need to do it doesn't matter what type of work, whether it's a pole change out or just a dig or a micro trench, would truly appreciate if you can have these plans reviewed by our street lighting folks. And we will try and turn them around as soon as possible based on our normal procedures. And, and, and I believe that we do that in the due process of this middle is to uh, send the correspondence to both Would of those departments. So we need, we need a response back. Right, from, right. Um, so we don't have anything back from uh, so if you can look out for that for me, Chris, that would be appreciated. Street light and DPW? Everybody yes. on the checklist. Um, 
So there's a checklist which Ms. Cording will yeah. give you because I've sort of failed you on this front. Sidewalk on Utah, or it comes out to the. So we, Todd has commented on all of the okay. locations. I believe this one is a manhole, so we're requesting it. it be moved into the roadway, yeah, right. preferably in a parking lane. Perfect. But you're looking after that, right? Yeah. Cross. So there are a couple that might you might see in crosswalks that we've already commented to. Great. This in the next two projects as well. How long is the run on the bike street? The total project is about 700 feet, and I want to say most of it is on white. There's a small part that crosses down onto Utah. <clears throat> but all three babies are micro, you're micro trenching all three, right? Correct. So minimum disruption to the business areas or whoever, at least that's the thinking. Yep. Other questions or comments on this? Yes. From your top? Yeah. All right, so if you just work out, uh, work out with uh, Old Port Street Lighting between now and August 8th, Come back for that approval. Correct. Great. All right. See you on August 8th. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is uh, 109 Prince Street, Boston Proper, a granted location on petition by Crown Castle Fiber. Again, Chris Murray with the Giamari Group representing uh, Crown Castle, seeking grant location on uh, Prince Street for approximately 700 feet. 95% um, of the project is micro trench, and there's about a 30 foot uh, connection into the electric manhole on the, uh, the left side of the plans um, for about 30 feet, so it's about 95% micro trench. My brain's drawing a blank. Prince Street is in the north end, or I'm trying to okay. north end, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, there's the a ice. parking garage right next door. Uh, did Wartens well? What's the condition of Prince Street? The part where he's going to do the full thing. Is it a chocolate hill? Speak nicely. Uh, is it in a questionable? I, I, I don't know off the top of my head. Can you provide pictures? Of Can the, you? Because Chris, uh, most of the north end area, we may have uh, re. It's a uh, commercial street on Yeah, that, that is my concern yeah. because it's commercial street that is triggering me. We put the... That's the one that moves all the way around. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So this is the, the, the northern side of commercial. Right. You're not cutting so it's commercial. So near the, uh, the bridge near... Uh, yeah. So are you cutting into commercial street, Chris? Or no, it's... Uh, there's, there's a, a uh, commercial street across the garage. Okay, so. all right, sir. Um, and that last... Are you trenching through the sidewalk, though, uh, on Prince? On this part right here? Yep. Yes. Okay, you know, you'll know, restore the sidewalk. And that's the conventional part, and will restore the sidewalk, right? And the rest here is uh, my golf venture trend. No participants? Uh, no participants. Please, just for my sanity, are you and your team playing a broader role with variety of these telecommunication companies, meaning are you providing these services? You are representing quite a few telecommunication companies. Correct. Are you expanding that role? Because it's, it's nice when we have almost a single point of accountability. We like what you do, so if you can just let all your customers. We do represent other CLECs, for sure. Okay, so um, just let them also understand whatever we are. Absolutely. You. Crown Castle just had a project approved a few minutes ago, yeah. represented by Shelley. And same comments as far as before. Obviously, you're connecting to the street light up Prince Street. We'll just need something from uh, from street lighting that says that all of this stuff. We'll do. Other questions or comments on this? Name your top. Okay. Members of the public. Uh, see you on August 8th for this. Chris. 
Our next item of new business is 39-41 P Street, South Boston, New Granite Vocation, on a petition by Crown Council Fiber. Chris Murray with the uh, Giamari Group representing Crown Castle Fiber, looking for grant location on P Street in South Boston. Uh, the total distance is approximately 705 feet. <clears throat> It'll be 100% micro trench and runs between East 4th Street and East 3rd Street. Uh, we sought, sought out participants um, and there were none. Uh, there was no city shadow available in that area and there was no Verizon conduit available as well. Um, and as stated uh, with the previous two jobs, we will uh, seek out responses from street lighting and DPW as such. Thank you. It looks like the handle on uh, East, East Broadway and Peace Street is somewhat close to the crosswalk. Correct. Yes. Oh, it's, oh, got it. Yes, and, the, and that did come up and we will address the, uh, the restriping. Thank you. Yeah, we just haven't updated the plans yet, but all of the, we commented on the Great, thank you so much. Other questions or comments? Right. Amir Todd? Okay. Members of the public? All right, uh, see you on August 8th and you'll have the uh, information from the okay. street. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you. Our final item of new business is Harvard Street, School Street, Thane Street, Park Street, Norwell Street, Millard Street, Spencer Street, Whitfield Street, Southern okay. Avenue. Elmer Street, Talbot Avenue, Colonial Avenue, and Dorchester. Specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department. Stephanie Seskin, I'm the Active Transportation Director within the City's uh, Transportation Department. Um, I'm here with plans for a variety of streets in the Dorchester neighborhood um, that we have been studying for the last few years as part of our Neighborhood Slow Streets Traffic Calming Program. Um, I'm joined by Radu Nan from Kittleson & Associates, um, who is the project engineer uh, for this work. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, Great. Um, we'll start with uh, Harvard School and Thane Street. We are proposing uh, geometric modifications in the intersection um, to uh, improve visibility, shorten pedestrian crossing distances, um, and provide compliant curb ramps. Um, this is also adjacent to the Holmes Innovation School, and we have been in coordination with BPS on school bus issues as well as their safety concerns around the children who are walking to school. Before we get into the specifics, this might just be sure. helpful for but can you talk briefly about sort of neighborhood slow streets overall and what we will expect to see as the PIC over the next year or so? Yeah, you're going to probably see me at every meeting for the next three yeah. months. <laughs> <laughs> we we love it. <laughs> um, Yes, well, okay, I guess first, um, apologies to Denise, um, because I had been trying to contact the previous Boston Water and Sewer Commission person um, without any luck, obviously. Um, so she only received the plans recently, um, but uh, we are going to update them based on their comments for the public hearing. Um, the Neighborhood Slow Streets program um, is Mayor Walsh's sort of premier uh, traffic calming initiative. Um, we are working in uh, zones um, to address neighborhood concerns around speeding and traffic safety. Uh, we select the areas based on objective criteria, including crash history, um, presence of uh, older adults, uh, children, um, our uh, public spaces like schools and libraries and parks. Um, so those that have the highest need are chosen first. Um, we go through a pretty extensive community engagement process with the neighborhoods to understand what exactly their concerns are, um, collect data, bring in professionals um, to 
bring that all together and propose recommendations that would address some of their safety concerns as well as lower speeding. Um, within the slow streets areas, we are going to be changing the speed limits to 20 miles an hour. Um, and so a lot of the uh, changes are to help self-enforce that 20 mile per hour speed limit um, rather than relying on our police department. Um, uh, that's, okay, great. That's the elevator image. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe now do you want to walk us through uh, School Harvard and Thane? Uh, and sure. Um, do you have a larger yes. size of that? It's my Vanna White. Um. So, uh, at the intersection of Harvard uh, School and Thane, we're proposing to relocate a uh, curve along the, uh, the west edge of Harvard School to increase visibility for um, the, the new crosswalk. Um, we are also proposing uh, extending the curve lines along School Street and Thane to realign the crosswalks and reduce their length, also improve the, uh, the desired line for uh, how pedestrians would cross this intersection. This is also an area where children <coughs> drop off um, and pickup happens. Um, so um, the enlarged area helps with uh, the students having a safe space um, to um, wait for gaps in traffic. Um, at Park and, um, and Norwell Street, we are proposing a curb extension on the northwest corner, as well as a raised crosswalk on the south side of the intersection. Um, this intersection accesses uh, the Fairmont Line T-stop and um, experiences a lot of pedestrian activity. So these enhancements uh, create greater visibility for the pedestrians crossing Norwell, um, as well as provides directional ramps um, in the future. Fadu, can you hold up for a second? Stephanie, are these some locations where you, first of all, started with the flex stakes and you are making it permanent, or? Okay. So these are brand new locations which you, so I'm going to obviously assume, otherwise this would have come to PIC. It has been reviewed by Public Works? Yes. Okay. So what happened to the drainage lines and all the other infrastructure that is you, sir. Yes, the, the, the drainage information is included in the plans. And Have you looked at them? Uh, do catch basins need to move? Because this is a little bit more than right. what I was led to believe in terms of formalizing any of the, the flex stakes locations. You know what I'm trying to say, yeah. right? Okay, like in the... Uh, at New, at New England Ave, uh, right, where Zach is building that out as part of the reconstruction project. Yeah, I think, um, so, in part re in response to um, concerns around maintenance, uh, both from the street sweeping, clearing the trash out of the areas, snow plowing, but also from getting knocked over, um, or I think more importantly, the aesthetic is really where communities have concerns around doing interventions um, at a scale, at what, using the temporary materials. We just need to do some housekeeping in terms of the signature blocks that needs to be on these pads yeah, because yeah, these we, didn't we, get we generated. We're going to wait after this hearing to get right. the Yeah, yeah. Todd sent a number of comments yesterday, so we'll so fix that too. A little uh, pork chop thing that's coming at school. Mm -hmm. uh, the big one, not the mm -hmm. little one, one, that yes. one. So, snow clearance. Which, which property owner is going to be responsible for removing the snow off that desired path? You, sir. Yeah. Not Mrs. Skinner. This is a, uh, an extension of the, the school property. Mm -hmm. um, so that. DPS. Sir, you are working on Not Miss Seskin. You are the design of record. You are the one who is going to stand. You are the one who is doing this work on behalf of public works now. So who is going to main, who is going to shovel that snow? Because otherwise, the pedestrian path of travel is not going to be complying, and then we are going to create an awkward situation. We can have that conversation. Yes, the, the adjacent area is BPS. Yes. I think it's we did not have that, that, that conversation, sir. So we will have that before we. So, is it fair for me to assume that you may not have had that conversation with all the areas where you are extending the curb lines? That's correct. So, except for like the pork chop type of thing is where we are going to care because like, there's people are going to clear their four feet and then the, the accessible roof will be outside of it, but the bump outs and stuff like that will function like a typical, the adjacent property owner is responsible for clearing the sidewalk around 
Um, so it's only really the big islands that we would ever have to have a specific conversation about. Do any of the drainage catch basins need to be relocated in any of this? Yeah. In, in other, for the, in, the, in the petition Calvin, which you have in the WOW project? For these two intersections, no. And we were specific about our uh, design choices <coughs> in order to limit the relocations of catch basins and reduce the amount of underground work that um, has to be done for, for these locations. Um, we, we are sensitive to the cost of the program, so we'd like to implement as many improvements as possible, um, hence the decision um, not to, to relocate drainage facilities and maintain existing drainage patterns. And we were fortunate enough, I guess, with the topography of these two intersections, where that is not necessary. What about the street lightings that are needed? Because now, have you checked these plans with street lighting to find out whether there's enough lighting for that? crosswalk or that area which has the pork chop. I wish I had my pointer. So if you can again mm -hmm. right over. So within that whole zone, pedestrians are going to be within that zone. Is there enough lighting? With at the direction of the public works department, we have relocated existing lighting. Yes, but right we within that area. You are creating lighting. a zone where pedestrians are now have to go to that area. Mm -hmm. So what I don't know is where the existing street lights are. Wherever those street lights are, does it shed enough lighting to that location? We will check in about additional lighting. We are relocating existing lighting to the street furniture zone. There, are, there is existing lighting along the uh, sidewalk. That's one I can pick up. It's, you're not fattening it, but that pork chop. Yes, I'm concerned that about whether. Does not include additional lighting right now. Is I think there's a, there's a conversation which we can have with, with street lighting about, obviously they're, they've put the intersection already, and whether the lighting for the intersection already is sufficient for people who are standing on the side of the On that location, exactly. People were exactly. driving there and it was ostensibly lit appropriately before yeah. we put a sidewalk there. Anyone. My concern is because now Not we are introducing the pedestrian to a location yep. where yep. if there's enough, if there's lack of lighting, the pedestrian is going to lose out. At, at a minimum, yes, we can look at the, uh, the lighting level. So can you tell me what what are the things which you looked at? Excuse me, sir. What are the things which you looked at? Because you you tend to be answering my questions mm -hmm. as to no, you didn't, no, you didn't. Can you go through the, the list of things? The concerns were sight lines, uh, locating crosswalks, and locations that are uh, visible, uh, or increasing the visibility for stopping sight distance for approaching vehicles, uh, and also matching desired lines for pedestrians in this area. Um, those relate to safety concerns of program. And that's, uh, that, that, that was the main traffic engineering based analysis that we've done. But here you are moving curb lines. There's a reason why the public works and the PICs establishes a line and grade and where the curb lines are. There's a series of other issues. Have you gone through all those? With the exception of, of lighting, um, drainage was something that we've looked at. Um, I think that the lighting one is, is a new issue that we have not addressed. Or some work that needs to be done because yeah, we did. I, thought, yeah. I really thought that these were the locations which we collectively have reviewed based on the big yeah, states. Yeah. So they, they are. I, I think that the only lighting issue that we're going to have is where we're profoundly changing the curb line. Like the rest of this is just about sliding it to our new curb line um, and kind of maintaining what was ever there. So similarly with the snow clearance, like until we have these major bump outs, the the lighting and the, the snow clearance and all that stuff. Uh, isn't going to be an issue, um, but for these, yeah, we can. Are you like. Stephanie, are you putting new crosswalks to get past this intersection? And how would the crosswalks, I think we're assuming, put line up? We have separate plans that show the pavement markings plans. Yes. In, in the construction plan. Okay, you need to show them over here. Yeah, no, this because is just a subset. We'll get you the right plans. We haven't, we've made plan comments, but these don't reflect. Them. So this is just a subset of the construction drawings. Pavement markings don't typically go on PIC plans, but we can add them if necessary. So we've walked through these two intersections. The other, correct me the other changes that we are looking at today are the, are the speed humps. Uh, in this zone, then there are additional curb changes in the other.
significant alternative path that we're, we're trying to uh, implement to becomes um, across uh, all more south routes um, at, at a spacing uh, between 175 and 200 feet, which um, was found to be most effective at maintaining speeds at the posted speed limit, 20 miles an hour. Um, the race intersection or the, the race crosswalk at Park Street will be a part of the network and help move devices along Norwell Street um, to maintain that, um, that speed profile for vehicles traveling north south through the same road. How about questions on the speed humps, bumps? The design of the hump, yeah, are you following public works or the public works standards to the a combined public works slash transportation department speed hub design? Are you following those guidelines? Yes. That's it. The location, who is making the determination of the locations? Is it city guidance or is it you who is picking up the locations? We are picking the locations based on uh, conditions in the field that so um, the, the free of uh, conflicts with utilities, primary, uh, driveways, um, handicapped parking spots. Um, those are the criteria that were used as, in, in addition to the spacing of the, the speed humps. Um, so we are looking at locations that would be able to, uh, where a speed hump would be able to be implemented without additional utility work. At the public hearing, I'll be asking the same question with the today's new business. So the location of the speed hub and the dis location is more important because if you indiscriminately put speed humps, it has both a positive and a negative consequence. Okay. So I just want to make sure that it is clearly understood for this commission that the responsibility was exclusively yours as to the location of the speed humps yes, and the design it is following the city's guidelines. The speed humps and those two intersections, are there other components we need to address uh, today in your business? There are three more. <laughs> Generally speaking, the uh, last three implementations are located on the Howard Avenue um, and uh, along the Emerald Street. This is, these are implementations uh, to complete the work that's already been done by uh, the city, uh, and I think you've heard about this neighborhood just earlier, um, or uh, previously, the Union Avenue. Uh, speed humps have already been implemented on uh, Colonial Avenue, Southern Avenue, uh, a number of, of streets, including one speed hump on uh, Whitfield. The additional work, excuse me, sir. Stephanie, these are the ones you tried it out, and we are making it formalized, right? Um, not all of them, no. Um, it, the, we tried to find some temporary ways to do things like the traffic circle, but it, finding approval for materials is challenging. Um, so, uh, and then figuring out what the right geometry should be um, and how to do that with temporary materials. So um, these are all proposed permanent changes. Walk us through that. Sure. Uh, I'll start with the race crosswalk at Elmhurst Park. Um, there's an entrance to the park um, directly aligned with the proposed race crosswalk along Elmhurst Street. Um, this crosswalk is, is mid block and requires the reconstruction of the sidewalk and installation of two um, catch, catch basins uh, and inlets to. Um, maintain a lot of drainage uh, along the street. Um, the raised crosswalk will raise up six inches to the level of the existing curb. Um, the curb will reset as part of this reconstruction to make sure that uh, sidewalks are draining away from the properties in the street. Um, and detectable warning devices are going to be installed at the edge of the raised crosswalk. Uh, same thing, I'm entering the pavement markings plan, but if you can just provide the pavement markings plan that sure. for uh, the public hearing, just to make sure it's consistent with BTA's uh, design, which I imagine it is. Excuse me, I'm a little bit lost. Uh, I may be jumping ahead here. So, the sketch which you have 
to the right. Yes. Uh, sorry. No. That one. Yeah. Okay. Where you take an intersection and you've taken certain liberties yeah. at that intersection. Okay. So we have multiple right of ways that are coming to that intersection, and we do assume Whitfield and and Southern. Southern. Yes. Yes. So right. Okay. So normally, for the good right of ways, which we have at least a 26 foot curve, or curve to curve, you've taken that thing down to 16 feet. When, when did 16 feet get approved as a minimum width for a two way affordable street? Right. So 16 feet here, but 16 feet here. It, it hasn't been. I think that the 20 foot rule is for a car. There, we can absorb pinch points, uh, but it can't in, be a whole street that we have. Uh, in, oh, that, um, this this is, right. no, I know the island is mountable, but when there's snow, this is not going to work. Okay, this is. So you need a 20 foot opening everywhere. We can walk through that. I mean, this is a one way street, correct? So, Chief, yes. it, it functions as a one way street. That's, a, that's an option which can, just because it's a one way street, you okay. still, because two months later, if this street gets converted to a two way street, this thing now limits our ability to make this street. Right, function. I think it's more okay. that it's a, if it's a one way street, 20 feet seems kind of. Palatial for uh, for one-way traffic. But here it restricts us from yeah. here through eternity for this street. Well, right. I mean, I, I think that none of these streets I don't believe are going to be destined to become two-way anytime soon, and I don't think that that's what we're trying to make it into the the that level of flexibility is the opposite of what this is getting at, which is slowing people down and the 20-foot right-of-way kind of is in direct conflict with that. One-way travel on 20 feet is not going to slow you down, for sure. Um, so, uh, it... So, so uh, can you walk us through the, the southern Whitfield intersection? Sure. Uh, this intersection um, is proposed to be reconfigured as a um, um, roundabout. Um, and the elements of, of curve uh, are meant to deflect the direction of um, the, the vehicle traveling in, in uh, all three directions. So for Whitfield going southbound, um, the, uh, the curb needs to be bumped out in, in respect to the center island to force the driver to make a turning maneuver through the intersection. Because the intersection is yield control, um, the driving speeds at 20 miles 20 miles, 20 miles an hour or less um, are um, uh, necessary to uh, allow for proper time reaction to additional users in the intersection, pedestrians or other cars. Um, the geometry of the intersection precludes somebody from driving faster than 20 miles an hour. Um, hence, the, the severity of the changes um, as they look on plans, um, and they are intentional to induce those types of speeds um, through this intersection. Um, the intersection was uh, designed as a tier shape uh, to reinforce the operation you know, southbound one way for Whitfield. Um, and uh, the truck apron was designed to allow, to continue to allow a uh, fire of ladder making this, this left turn without having to, um, to drive over the center line. So fire ladder, uh, truck templates checks were applied to this intersection, and the geometry of, of the intersection is based on um, that vehicle being able to move through this, this intersection um, after its reconstruction. Um, <coughs> this intersection does require some um, drainage, uh, inlets, um, um, relocations because of the extent of the, uh, the curve um, relocation. Along the same um, pipe they're on right now, or a new pipe gets uh, installed to an adjacent uh, drain, uh, drain, drain um, to maintain drainage at this intersection. Um, I think in the radius, uh, I don't have the details. The city, the north east corner. 
east. Okay, that, you know, okay, that thing. That, you know, so what's the radius of the edge stone that is going to go over there? This is a two foot edge stone. Two foot edge stone. Yes. Do you? Okay, we don't put two foot edge stones on streets. Uh, okay, so you, you have some homework to do on this design. Uh, have all you has have you incorporated all the public works? I'm going to assume this as. Yeah. Uh, yes. We'll have updated plans for the public hearing. Yes, then there's that. What is, what's currently in the center, in the center island? What, what's the currently? Yeah. Oh, there's sorry. nothing. I, sorry, I apologize. I mean, it's open there are no crosswalks, sorry. there are no compliant ramps, there's nothing yeah. there. Apologies, yeah. I mean, what is the current plan for what will go in the center island? Like, uh, how do we? Paper, so we would have a, a, an edge stone, and then um, above that edge stone, pavers at this point. Yeah. Do we have any school buses going through this intersection? What's the material? Papers and the permeable paper, the, um, the city standards for permeable, permeable paper. There are other, correct me wrong, there's two other pieces within Talbot Norfolk. Um, yes, more. there's one last intersection. Um, we're building, extending um, the, the curve out to. Um, so it is slower left turn maneuver from Talbot Avenue to Colonial Avenue. Um, this opening would be 20 feet in the future. Um, it's a raised crosswalk as well. Um, and it's intended to, again, slow down vehicles as they approach Talbot. Right now, the angle is um, uh, quite open, quite severe, and, and may allow vehicles to drive faster than um, desired into this slow zone. Some of the bars comments, you are pushing the light poles out, at least on the, on the west side. On the east side, you know, this is going on a street lighting conversation between now and Augustine, just to make it. Other components of TNT? These, uh, this New England ad, anything else that is part of TNT that is, this, this is the end, this is, this will be completing TNT. So I think between now and August 8th, I think there's a couple conversations that we can have. One is specifically around street lighting. Uh, have a conversation on the Whitfield and, and Southern Ave uh, uh, intersection, including payment parking plans. Incorporate the, the, the comments at the Stephanie's point and comments. So the point. verdict on the 16 feet, are we okay with that or are we pushing the point? I think, I mean, ultimately, it, if we approve. It needs to go out, so let's, let's A for the A. Yeah. No, 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 I mean, so, right. So, like, are we going to continue to show 16 feet on the 8th or? No, 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 no. The 16 feet, someone needs to have a conversation. So, the right people, because I don't know who is. Who's the right We'll make it happen, but I just like is it is it public works who's making the call? Is it fire? Who do we want to get it okay for? We'll make it. Safe. Yeah, okay. it's not definitely not in camera. Not in, this is not the forum to have this conversation. Of course. Okay. Yeah. We'll follow up with Zach and Jeff. Okay. Other questions or comments? Um, actually, yeah, I know John, we spoke yesterday on the phone. Uh, we still are reviewing plans, so we do expect to give you comments back, with an, more additional comments back in the next day or two. Absolutely. Um, so some comments we had discussed were um, on the detail for the speed hump. It, it looks like you're uh, putting the speed uh, hump up against the curb, but actually I know we discussed it. You, show, you know, it's about a foot off the curb yes. on, each, on either side. If you can just uh, update that detail to show that. The construction plans make it appear that the speed humps go from curb to curb, but the actual detail doesn't. So Correct. That's that. yes. um, and then the other comment we have was just uh, as a, I didn't look at the plans from um, the sent this morning, um, but actually uh, the ones we got the, the other day just didn't show the water lines on some of the sheets. I think they're on there; they're just not labeled as water lines, so you can uh, just label label those. And then we may have, like I said, we may have um, a few other comments. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Name your top. 
Okay. Members of the public? All right. Uh, so you guys on August 8th? With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. Motion. Aye. Aye. So moved.